Hello, we are Tavon and David from TD Adventures. So we received this uh, recall letter from Cummins. It said Cummins Inc. has decided that a defect which relates to motor vehicle safety exists in certain Onan QG 2800i and QG 2800i EVAP generators that were manufactured between March 3rd, 2020 and January 31st, 2023. They, they then say uh, customer records indicate that you may own the generators listed in the enclosed table. Why is the recall being conducted? The fuel hose between the inline fuel filter and the injection pump module may have inadequate clamp force, possibly resulting in a gasoline leak. A gasoline leak in the presence of an ignition source may increase the risk of fire. <laughs> what are we doing about the problem? Cummins has released field safety campaign number PG5115 to correct this condition by inspecting and, if necessary, replacing the subject fuel hose and associated clamps. Repair parts are currently available at Cummins distributors and authorized warranty dealers. The repair will be completed free of charge and most applications will require approximately 1.7 hours to complete. And finally, it says, what should you do? Contact the nearest Cummins distributor or authorized warranty dealer to arrange to have this campaign performed on your generator. So we uh, looked around in Connecticut, or Tavon called around and was unable to find anyone who had the parts in stock. But then you reached out and uh, friends, Jerry and Robin. Robin, they already went to the location in New Hampshire. Right. They had already gone to a location in New Hampshire. So Tavon called that location and they had something in stock. They had the part. Yep. So we arranged to drive up there. It was about a week out. And uh, so up, we went up there to um, Concord, was it? New Hampshire. Concord, New Hampshire. Um, actually parked in the parking lot the night before, cleared that with the owners. And we're right there at 8 a.m. the next morning, the service bay. And uh, they, they took us right in and said um, that, that they might or might not have to do a, a change. Once they'd eyeball it and take a look, they would know. And uh, they were looking for a uh, the hose with like red markings on it, and that would tell them it's bad hose, and it needs to be replaced. And they replaced it with a hose with green markings, and they also replaced the clamp. And it, it took uh, much less than 1.7 hours for us. It, About half an hour. Probably a half hour. Um, we were actually sitting on, over on the side, not in the service area, so we weren't there to see when they brought the keys back in. So it was probably done maybe five or ten minutes earlier than when I went in and checked. <laughs> but it was done. Um, we, we talked to the um, we talked to the service manager there, and he said that when this recall was issued some months back, he was actually on the parts desk at that point, and he recognized that this was uh, something that needed to be reacted to quickly and ordered a bunch of kits before they became unavailable. So he's had a series of kits and he's renewed it whenever he could. And that day when we were there, he had 12 kit swap outs ready to go, scheduled to go. And if he hadn't swapped ours out, he said he would roll our kit to the next one in the waiting line. He'd call them up and say, come on in. But they did use it because we needed it to be swapped out. And he has people mm -hmm. from all over. Yeah, he said be because of um, how the hard shortage. it is to get the parts mm -hmm. that, and he was able to get them, that he'd serviced, um, uh, Vermont, Maine, Rhode Island, Rhode Island Connecticut, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Um, so f from all over, he's seeing everyone from all over to get this this um, recall taken care of. They did give us a receipt and it shows uh, it's for zero, zero cost. Always like those kinds of receipts. And um, here, here's what was noted. It said, uh, pulled RV up to the shop, removed access plate fuel line needed to be replaced so I removed air filter and fuel supply line removed and replaced 
fuel line with green lettered line. Reinstalled air filter and fuel supply line. Started and checked for leaks. No leaks present. Campaign complete. So they did run it to test it after they replaced the part. Good job. Too bad we could not use the generator the night before. What, what was the weather like? All right, so once we knew that this was a risk, we really didn't want to use the generator anymore because, you know, it is a good point that gasoline fumes in a, near an ignition source. Oh, explosion. You know, could lead to, um, you know, bad things. Um, so we were not running the generator and we're boondocking in the parking lot. So we don't have any power to plug in and the air conditioner requires power. So we can't run the air conditioner and our um, ceiling fan is broken right now. It doesn't open, it doesn't run. And it was very hot and very humid. And so we just roasted all night long. We only had the, uh, we had the some, clip on some clip on fans blowing directly on us that was just moving hot air around. So it wasn't the best of nights. And I, what did I do? I wet the, the towel? Yes, right. So Devon wet a hand towel and yeah. then uh, laid it across herself to help cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, perhaps we could have gone to you know a campground and, and paid to plug in, but, but we, we were already we... kind of committed at that point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you can endure one night like that. Right. That's it. So now we can use this generator. Yeah.